What's up SafeMoon Army? SafeMoon Mark here to go over exactly what happens when we decide to stop the burn of SafeMoon. If this concept of stopping the burn is new to any of you, the developers of SafeMoon have expressed multiple times that when the supply gets to a desirable point, we will be stopping SafeMoon from burning its supply on every transaction. What governs the burn of SafeMoon is the burn wallet, which is treated as a holder. And like all holders, the burn wallet gains reflections, passive income, based on the number of SafeMoon it owns. These reflections are therefore burned from the supply, since the burn wallet has no private key, and therefore these funds can never be accessed or brought back into circulation. As you may recall from my previous videos, the amount of reflections any holder gains can be expressed as follows. 5% of every transaction is separated and split up amongst all SafeMoon holders. The total value of every transaction that occurs over a period of time is defined as volume, how much money in SafeMoon has been sent around to various wallets, whether it is a buy, a sell, or a transfer. So 5% or 1 20th of our volume is split up for all the holders. The amount of reflections one specific holder will gain will be this result multiplied by your market share, how many SafeMoon you own relative to the total number of SafeMoon that exist. In our case, this is 1 quadrillion. After rewriting, we have a neat equation that tells us how much our daily reflections will be worth relative to the daily volume. Our equation is reflections equal volume multiplied by the number of SafeMoon you own divided by 20 quadrillion. I go into greater depth on this topic in my first video and the link will be in the description. This equation uses our total supply, 1 quadrillion, even though we have over 420 trillion burnt tokens. Why? Because the burn wallet is also gaining reflections, so its holdings count toward this calculation and this distribution. In the source code for the SafeMoon protocol, there is an empty list named exclude from rewards. And as the name suggests, any wallet address included in this list is exempt from receiving reflections. Now, to stop the burn process from continuing, the developers would simply add the burn wallet address to this list. If the burn wallet was to suddenly stop gaining reflections, what would that do to our daily reflections? No longer will we need to account for those burned tokens when calculating reflections. The only tokens that will count are tokens that are either held by users, exchanges, and unlocked liquidity pools. At this point, our burned tokens truly will be burned, as they can never be brought back into circulation and will not gain interest on themselves. This is a simple update to our equation, because instead of focusing on the total supply of tokens, 1 quadrillion, we use our circulating supply, which at the time of writing is near 580 trillion tokens. Note that circulating supply, when referring to cryptocurrency, refers to the total supply in existence, in SafeMoon's case, the total number of coins that have not been burned. So our new equation becomes reflections in USD is equal to the volume times the number of SafeMoon you own divided by 20 times the circulating supply. At this point, I hope you guys can see the inverse relationship between reflections and circulating supply. The lower the circulating supply is capped, the larger your reflections will be if you do not sell your tokens. Let us substitute in some values to see how our reflections will behave under various conditions. For starters, I will introduce my favorite equation. Assuming we do not stop the burn, let us assume I have 5 billion SafeMoon, my personal goal, and our daily volume reaches and stays steady at $1 billion, which is modest if the exchange, debit card, or blockchain perform even decently well. Since the burn wallet is still in effect today, we will divide by our normal value, 20 quadrillion, and see that you will earn $250 per day per billion dollars in volume, just for holding. This value does not change based on price, and will only increase based on how large the burn wallet becomes. If you notice, there is no reference to the size of the burn wallet in this equation. A common misconception is that the bigger the burn wallet gets, the less reflections you will receive, when the truth is exactly the opposite. Let us assume we stop the burn at 10 trillion tokens. If you are truly emerald handed and hold at least 1 billion safe moon at this point, let's see how much money you will earn every day. By substituting in values to our equation, using 10 trillion as the circulating supply and 1 billion as the number of SafeMoon owned, for $1 billion in volume, you see that you will earn $5,000 per day. That's right, if at this point we have a day where we get $10 billion of volume, that will be $50,000 added into your SafeMoon balance over the course of the day. 
If we update the number of SafeMoon we own to 5 billion, this becomes $25,000 per day per billion dollars of volume. If we lower the circulating supply to 1 trillion, we see that this becomes $250,000 per day per billion dollars in volume. This is why, despite any dip, I have not sold my SafeMoon. I bought in the beginning and I have not even considered it. We saw $600 million in volume despite being near impossible to buy and with no use cases developed yet. Holding is rewarding with SafeMoon. I do not care about the price. The lower the price is, the quicker we will burn these coins to get to this low circulating supply that we are dreaming of. I could not care less if the price of SafeMoon is up or down on any particular day. I care about volume and doing anything I can to increase it. The reason I say forget the price is because once I hit my goal of 5 billion safe moon, I am not selling under that point, regardless of how much my bag is worth. I will be throwing away a lifetime of reflections by doing so. I may sell my reflections weekly once I am comfortable with the size of my holdings, and I will use this weekly income to either branch out and increase my investment portfolio or have it pay for aspects of my daily life. If the devs are thinking like I am, they are already creating additional methods for burning the supply of SafeMoon beyond this stopping point, entirely separate from the traditional reflection method of burning SafeMoon that we see today. I have several projects in the work to do exactly this, and I am really looking forward to unveiling these to you over the next few months. Volume is key for the future of SafeMoon, and the developers being so adamant about creating an abundance of use cases just furthers my excitement. SafeMoon is not a buy low, sell high type of investment. It is more like buy whenever and earn interest forever. There are just so many aspects of SafeMoon that appeal to me, and I have so much more content to deliver to all of you, so hopefully you can feel as passionate about the project as I do. Thank you all for watching. Follow my Twitter at SafeMoonMark for news, updates, and a chance to win SafeMoon Weekly. SafeMoonMark out.